So far we've looked at writing unit and integration tests in Angular, and I mentioned in the first video, I actually got to this point by writing an end-to-end -end test, but don't worry about that for now. That can come later. Well, later is here now, so let's worry about it. There isn't too much to worry about though, because end-to-end -end testing is arguably the easiest part of this puzzle. We're going to see how end-to-end -end tests fit into the overall testing strategy we have been talking about, but you could also focus just on end-to-end -end tests if you want. The basic idea with an end-to-end -end test is that we test the application just like a normal human tester would. We just write a script that automatically runs those human actions, like clicking on buttons, navigating to certain pages, adding input to certain fields, and so on. We're not concerned with individual components or services, we are just using the application as a whole. These tests use the real, live running application just like a human tester would. If you're not ready to dive too deeply into testing or are struggling to get your bosses or clients to allocate time for it, end-to-end -end tests are great bang for your buck and the business case is quite easy to make. Likely you have people clicking around testing the apps manually every time there is some change or release coming up, so why not have a robot do it for you that is likely 1000 times faster and far more reliable? And why not have that feedback instantly available to the devs as they are building rather than waiting to discover some obviously broken feature? My specific approach to end-to-end -to -end tests involves basically treating them like user stories and as the entry point to my test-driven development approach. My end-to-end -end tests are kept quite minimal and basic. Here is the set of end-to-end -end tests I have so far for the project we have been looking at. These are all generally high-level user story style tests like can add checklist, can edit checklist, can view detail for a specific checklist. Before I build anything at all, I start with one of these tests. If you have a development process that involves creating user stories, you can pretty much just create an end-to-end -end test for each of those stories as you work on them. For the case we have been looking at in previous videos, I originally created this test. The first feature I created was simply some sort of empty message that is displayed if no checklists have been added yet. We tell our testing robot to go to the homepage, try to find an element that contains the text create your first, and expect that to be visible on the page. I've used Cypress for end-to-end -end tests quite a lot, but here I am using Playwright. I'm not going to get too much into the setup here as both of these tools have great getting started guides and use more or less the same concepts. For this specific case, I have my end-to-end -end tests in a separate project created with Playwright. To run the test, I can just serve my Angular application on port 4200 as usual, point my Playwright project to that, and run this command. This can all be configured automatically for a CI environment if necessary. Now I rewrote that test we just looked at to make it simpler, but keep in mind that the actual test in my project looks more like this. This uses the recommended page object structure, where we abstract our locators and some other methods into a home page class to make things more reusable and maintainable. This way, if we need to update selectors or change the way adding a checklist works, we can just do it in one place rather than having to update every test. So the idea is that we have this test, it will fail of course because at this point I haven't added anything at all to the application. Remember that even though I've released this video last in this series, it is actually the first step in my testing and development process. At this point, nothing outside of the bare bones generated Angular application exists. The end-to-end -end tests just pretend things exist, and then when the test fails because they don't exist, we make those things exist. We imagine it, we test it, and then we create it. As I mentioned, if you want, you can just write end-to-end -end tests and write code to satisfy those tests. But for me, the part where the end-to-end -end test initially fails is what determines the unit and integration tests I need to write. I write an end-to-end -end test to determine what unit test I need to write to get past the current error in the end-to-end -end test. I then write code to satisfy that unit test and check if the end-to-end -end test passes now. If it doesn't, I write another unit test to get past the next hurdle in the end-to-end -end test and so on until the end-to-end -end test passes. Usually I end up writing five to 10 unit and integration tests per end-to-end -end test. Keep in mind that this is not a completely strict process. In some cases, I choose not to write a unit test at all if I don't think it provides any value over what the end-to-end -end test is already testing. Now, because I've been a good boy and have kept my commits clean and organized for this project, you can actually get a pretty good idea of what this looks like in practice. First, we will start with a simple example. I started this whole process by adding the no checklist message end-to-end -end test. 
Then we can see what I did in the Angular project to address this test. First, I created the unit test that we saw in the first video for displaying the no checklist message. Then I added the checklist input, which was required to get the test to compile. Then I added the feature as in the actual code for displaying the no checklist message. Then I created another unit test to check that the message is not displayed when there are checklists supplied as input. And then I added the feature for displaying the message only if the checklist input is empty. At this point, the end-to-end -end test and all of the unit tests pass, so that feature is done. Of course, this is a rather basic feature. So let's quickly run through the commit log for a more complex example. Here is the end-to-end -end test for another feature in the application that required a lot more work, adding checklists. I'm going to have to speed run this one as this feature is kind of at the other extreme of the amount of work required to get a single end-to-end -end test to pass. So first I wrote a unit test to check that the checklist list input renders a list item for each checklist supplied to it. Remember, we are testing things that don't exist yet. I then created that feature. I added an add checklist button to the interface with no unit test as this is already adequately covered by the end-to-end -end test clicking the button. I tested that the currently non-existent app modal has its is open input set to true when the add button is clicked. This will eventually handle displaying a modal on screen for the user to provide details for the checklist being created. I then installed the Angular CDK so I could utilize its dialog component for the modal. Then I added the feature for setting the app modal is open input to true when the add button is clicked. I did a bit of a code refactor as I realized I put an ng4 on my ul tag instead of the li tag. Then I created an empty app form modal component. This is the component that will be displayed inside of the modal to render the form. I added a test for supplying a form group to the form modal component to determine what fields it displays. Then I added that feature. Then I tested that when the is open input on the modal changes to true, it will open the Angular CDK dialog with the appropriate template. Then I implemented that feature. I tested that the form modal emits a save event when the form is submitted. I implemented that feature. I tested that the close event emits when the save button on the modal is clicked. I implemented that feature. I tested that the add source is nexted when the form is saved. Then I implemented that feature. I tested that the add source emitting causes the correct data to be added to the state signal. Then I implemented that feature. I supplied the checklist data from the state to the checklist list component. And no unit tests here as I feel it is already adequately covered by the end-to-end -end test. I tested that the modal closes on save. And then I implemented that feature. Now obviously that's a lot and I've rushed through things, but if you want to, you can find all of those commits above in the source code linked in the description to see exactly what code changes were required for each step. At this point, the end-to-end -end test and all of the unit and integration tests I wrote pass, and I can move on to the next end-to-end -end test and start the process again. This is a strategy that I have refined over the years and I find it works well for me. Uh, it strikes a nice balance between the time invested in tests and the amount of value you get from the tests. And since I generally take a behavior driven approach to testing as in a more black box style of test, I find that there is generally little maintenance of tests required as I'm generally testing desired outcomes, not specific implementation details. But this is ultimately just my preference and different people and different teams are going to have very different opinions on testing. Sometimes ultimately boiling down to just preference and sometimes different situations just call for different approaches. My advice is to try not to get too bogged down in whatever the best way to test is or worry that you're doing it wrong and worst of all letting that scare you away from testing at all. Just keep writing tests and over time you will get better at it. The bad tests you write will probably end up being the most valuable in the sense that they'll help give you a stronger sense of why some other approach to testing might be more valuable. As they say, pain is the greatest teacher. If you like this video please consider a like or subscribe before you go and I hope to see you back here for the next one.